What's up you guys, thank you for joining me again. Now in this video, we are going to be covering the final two subtopic of differentiation, which is rates of change and also small change. So let us start with rates of change. So usually when you have, when the question asks you to solve rate of change, you just need one thing. You just need to solve using chain rule. Now I didn't cover this in the previous uh, sub what videos. Reason is because we, I don't think it was necessary, but for now to solve rates of change, you need to use this. Okay. So what does rate of change means? Rate of change means how fast something change. So for example, question can ask you, find the rate of change of y. So that means they want you to find dy over dt. Because rate means time, how fast something uh, something changes, right? Rate means how fast. So change of y, so it's dy. And then rate will be dt. So you have, you are finding for dy dt. So how do you find for dy dt? So that's when you use chain rule. So chain rule is like this. dy over dt equals to dy over something times something over dt. So this is how you usually do chain rule. The dy will be here and the dt will be here. And what about the uh, this other two? This other two depends on the question. If the question give you volume, then it's going to be dv and here will be dv. If they give you area, then it's da over da. Okay, depending on the question. But the key thing is this one must be the same as this and this one must be the same as this. Okay, and then these two must be the same, dA and dA, so that you can cut them and you get dy over dt. Okay, so this is just an example. And this is what I call as chain rule. So why is it called chain rule? Because you are sort of like forming a chain using two different derivatives. Okay, you are using two different derivatives and you combine them to get your final answer depending on what they ask for okay so if you don't understand don't worry we'll go through the examples together so let's see a curve has an equation of so they give you this equation here find an expression for dy dx so question a to find dy dx this one you have to use product rule okay if you don't if you're not familiar which one to use please refer to the previous uh, videos all right so this one is you have to use product rule so you need the u this will be the u this will be the v so u is equals to x minus 8 so u prime would be 1 v equals to x plus 4 power 1 over 2 okay the square root i'm going to write 1 over 2 instead okay then v prime equals to 1 over 2 x plus 4 and then 1 over 2 minus 1 will be negative 1 over 2. And then here u times 1. Okay, because you differentiate what is in the bracket. But in this case, it's, since it's just times 1, I don't have to write that. So this one, you can simplify. It gets 1 over 2 square root x plus 4. Okay, and like I said, if you don't remember, please uh, refer back to the previous videos. Okay, because it will be too much for me to uh, repeat. So now, in this case, uh, product rule is what u v prime plus v u prime correct to find dy dx so dy dx would be equals to x minus 8 times 1 over 2 square root x plus 4 plus x plus 4 square root Okay, with, even if I times 1, it's going to be the same. So I'm not going to write there. So you can expand this. You get, I mean, multiply in. You get 2 square root x plus 4 plus x plus 4. Okay, I would suggest, oh, don't leave your answer like this. Because why? You can actually uh, simplify this. How you simplify? By multiplying the 
multiplying the conjugate so here you can be over one correct and then you can multiply the conjugate here times x plus 4 times 2 x plus 4 to make them become the same denominator so what you will get is equals to x minus 8 plus so when you multiply this what do you get you get 2 bracket so square root times square root then you remove the square root right so you get x plus 4 then the bottom here would be the same thing 2 square root x plus 4 okay then you can simplify this you should get x minus 8 plus 2x plus 8 over 2 square root x plus 4 so what is your answer here you can simplify you get 3x over 2x plus 4 so this will be a more simplified answer okay so this is your dy dx so this one is actually based on the previous video we have learned okay so now we're going to solve question b so question b question is asking you to find the rate of change of y rate of change of y so that means they're asking for dy over dt right rate of change of y when x is equal to 5 if x increases at rate of 6 units per second so what is this the x is increasing right so it's basically the rate change of x correct if not you see the unit you see the the unit they are saying is 6 unit per second what what the unit stands for the x the increase of x correct so that means this one here the 6 is actually dx over dt is equals to 6 okay based on this so now you can form your equation remember i said chain rule times something over dt so here what is going to be at these two position is going to be x because you have dx dt right so it's going to be dx here so here also must be dx because otherwise if you put different you cannot cancel so you have to be the same right so dx dx so dy dx you have already found which is this okay dx dt is given to you right so now you just have to solve it so now in this case dy dx is 3x what is x they told you x is equals to 5 so 3 times 5 divide by 2 square root 5 plus 4 times 6 so you get 15 over 936 times 6 so your final answer would be 15 units per second you can write like this or you can write per second okay this is your answer 15 units per second so the rate change of y is 15 units per second all right now let's see the next question the diagram on the, oops sorry the diagram on the right shows a bit moving along the curve with equation okay so they give you the equation equation of the curve at this at point a this particular coordinate the rate change of x huh so they gave you rate change of x so dx over dt equals to 3 units per second okay then they ask you to find what find the rate change of y so that means dy dt they want you to find dy dt so you can form your equation first okay if that makes it easier for you you can form your equation first so dy over dt equals to dy over something times something over dt so what is going to be up here since they gave you the x value you're going to substitute dx oops sorry dx okay so dx over dt you have already found which is this right dx over dt so now all you have to find is dy dx so you know that y is equals to 1 over 8 x square so what is dy dx this is basic differentiation right 1 over 8 then times 2 okay you bring the 2 forward so you times 2 
and then x power 2 minus 1 would be 1 so I'm gonna write just gonna write x there so it becomes 1 over 4x okay now since they told you what it is at point a right what is the x value of a 4 correct the x value of point a is 4 so when you substitute into this dy dx make sure you are using the x value at that point so in this case it's going to be 1 over 4 x is 4 times 3 so answer is 3 units per second okay so this is your answer is pretty straightforward correct now let's see the next one a block of ice in the form of cube in the form of cube so they're telling you you have a block of ice which is a cube with sides x so that means all three all sides are x right because it's a cube so all same length is left to melt at a rate of 10.5 for Z, okay, I want you all to see this. Cm cube per minute. So what does that mean? Cm cube means volume, right? So in other words, this unit here, that this 10.5 represents dv over dt. Okay, dv over dt. Because why? The volume is decreasing because it's melting. Correct? So that's why they gave you Cm cube, which is volume per minute. So dv over dt. So are you going to write like this? dv over dt equals to 10.5 answer is no huh? why because the amount is reducing it's decreasing so you are getting lesser correct so it's the volume is going to be getting lesser so it's negative 10.5 cm cube per minute okay make sure you're using negative 10.5 otherwise you get the wrong answer so coming back find the rate of change of x so they want you to find dx dt right so again we are going to use the chain rule dx over dt equals to what dx over something times something over dx dt so what is going to be up here since they gave you volume you're going to use that so dv and here so dv okay next dv over dt you have already found which is this so all you need to find now is dx over dv but how to find that well what you can do is instead of finding dx over dv you can first find dv over dx you after that you uh, flip it okay so in this case what's the volume volume is the volume of cube is x times x times x which is x cube so what is dv over dx dv over dx would be 3x square right differentiate that so you are finding for dx over dv not dv over dx so make sure you flip it so dx over dv would be equals to 1 over 3x square okay so what what's the x value you're going to substitute they give you here x equals to 10 cm so just substitute okay so it's 10 cm here so 1 over 3 times 10 square times negative 10.5 so your answer would be negative 7 over 200 cm per minute okay i'm gonna write full uh, cm per minute okay so that's the rate change of x all right next all right next question the diagram on the right shows a cylindrical candle with radius 3 cm okay the height is hcm so they gave you the height this is the height hcm and its volume is v the candle is lit and the height decreases at a rate of 0 0.6 cm per minute okay so they're telling you the height is decreasing right decreasing so from here you know what is what is this dh over dt right at the rate of if you're not sure right dh over dt you can just see the unit unit is what cm so in this case it's height so i write dh per minute so minute is time so dt okay 
So dh over dt equals to 0.6. No, it's not 0.6. It's negative 0.6 because it's decreasing. Okay, so cm per minute. Okay, so now question A, express V in terms of H. So they just want you to express. So volume of the candle, the calendar, sorry, what calendar? <laughs> the candle is a cylindrical candle, right? So it's going to be pi R square times H. That's the volume. So what's the R? R is given to you 3 cm. So 3 square pi times H. So it's 9 pi H. So this is the uh, expressing V in terms of H. So this is your answer. Now question B. Find the rate of change of the volume of the candle when the height is 8 cm. So they ask you to find rate of change of volume. So that means dV over dt. So again chain rule. So dV over something times something over dt. So what is going to be this something? Since you are given height, you are going to use the height dH. Okay. So now, dH over dt, you have already found. Now you have to find dV over dH, which you can find by, by differentiating the volume formula. So V equals to 9 pi H. So what is going to be the dV over dH? You differentiate the volume in terms of height. So it's going to be 9 pi. Okay. So now, 9 pi times dH over dt is negative 0 0.6 so your answer should be negative 5.4 pi and this is a volume right so cm cube per minute okay so this is how you solve